zoom in like, you know, like 40,000 feet and they're like fake. Y'all, we need to talk. There are a lot of people who are just hateful and mean in the service dog community and I wanna talk about it. So let me find a place to sit my camera. All right, so I wanna talk about this because I feel like I have just seen so many mean little people in service dog groups lately, either being mean to each other because somebody asks a question and they honestly don't know the answer, that's why they're asking. Or the other thing I've seen is people like bragging about being mean to other people out in public who try to approach them about their dog. I don't even know where to start on this, honestly. I think I'm gonna start stuff in the community because that seems to be like rampant right now. I'm particularly talking about in the Facebook groups. It's like freaking middle school. Seriously, it's stupid. There was a person who seriously asked a legit question. Like they really, really had a legit question and they had been told something about a timeline for their dog that was a prospect and they came in to ask a question. Um, and I actually think that they may have even approached it like they were happy that it was gonna be that quick or something. And they got torn up. This person didn't have a service dog already. This was their dog they were getting from a trainer. Number one, you don't have to judge people, but if you feel like you just are so called to like say something about how this person's wrong, you can do so in a nice way. And I've always heard that service dog training takes about two years. I know that my dog, Faraby, I know that she has been training with me. I mean, I've had her since she was nine weeks old. I feel like I've done everything in the right timeline of everything. I feel like I haven't pushed us too far. Um, if anything, I've, I've not pushed us hard enough, but she is 18 months old right now at the time of recording. And I've always heard that service dog training takes about two years. I don't know that she's gonna be completely trained by the time she's two. I have high hopes, but I also know that she's a dog and I also know she's her own little person. So, you know, and I can also look back and say with other dogs that I've had in my life, I wasn't training Bella to be my service dog, but I promise you, if I had have wanted to do that with her from a baby onward, Bella would have been most likely fully trained at like one year old, maybe even before that, because she was just a different type of a dog. She was just, she was much more calm, but also like just as smart as Faraby. So you see what I'm saying? Like every dog is different. So even though we know as the community, we know 18 to 24 months is typically, you know, what they tell you a service dog will be trained within. But that is gonna vary from dog to dog. But I also don't think that you should bash somebody for saying, yeah, my dog is fully trained at, you know, 18 months or, or 16 months or whatever. And a good example of this is look at Joy Ross, her newest guide dog. They actually placed that dog with her. I think the dog was 16 or 17 months old and that was from a guide dog school. This dog is guiding a blind person. So it can be done. So just because somebody's dog is not, you know, what you in the community think that their dog should be as far as the age goes, it doesn't mean that they won't succeed at that age. Everybody who has a service dog has a disability of some type. So you are bullying a disabled person by being mean to them about their dog. Not necessarily you watching, but people in the community get so mad about other people coming up and like asking questions and whatever about, oh, they're bothering a disabled person. It's like the disabled people bully other disabled people in the groups. Y'all be nice, be supportive. And you know what? You can throw your two cents out there. You can say, you know, it's rare that that happens, but it could happen. Congratulate people on their dog. Congratulate people on that stuff. Don't sit there and just like be a bully. Another thing that really, really, really just got under my skin this week, there was a person who was very proud they had gone on their first, like, I don't know if it was their very first public access outing or if it was, you know, their first one to like a big box store or what, but they had, you know, made a post about it. They were proud of themselves and they had pictures of their dog in the store and stuff. And they had kind of uh, told what they had done. And one of the things they did was whenever they arrived, they went to the customer service desk and just let the customer service people know and the manager know that they were training today. People got onto them so bad for that. And I'm gonna be honest, I did that. Whenever, the very first time, I took Fairby to a grocery store because I didn't know what to expect. I felt like she was solid. I, you know, I felt good, I felt really good about it but because I, I didn't know, um, and you never know. And you know, if it makes you feel better, now 
you don't have to do that. But for me personally, it made, it put my mind at ease to tell, basically, in case there were any questions or anything. So for me to go to the service desk at first and say, hey, whatever, at that point, I was putting myself in a position to handle any questions up front. I had my ADA cards if I needed one, and at that point, I was prepared, you know, if it's trouble and I'm leaving, whatever, it's not a big deal. It just, it put my mind at ease. And I feel like the person in that group who, who said that, it's the same thing for them. Like, it puts you in a different mindset to know you're in control of the situation. If anyone wants to ask questions, you're right here for them to ask questions now. And hopefully, I mean, there's always a chance somebody could come up to you in the store working there that could say something, but it kind of changes your mindset. Not that you have to ask permission, I'm not saying that, and I know people don't do that, and that's fine too. If, you, if you're if you training and you don't want to go up and tell somebody you're training, don't. But don't bash people who do choose to do that because it's, it's a personal preference, and the whole thing is to make you feel comfortable because if you're not comfortable training your dog and you are in public doing that, your dog can tell you're not comfortable. So your dog is not gonna perform as well and do what they need to do either. I'm not trying to talk about people. I'm sitting here telling people be nice and don't do this, but I feel like I'm talking about people. But I'm just saying, don't be mean to people. Y'all, be nice and supportive. And you know what? If you don't, if you feel like that's dumb as hell for somebody to go to the service desk, then don't do it. <laughs> no one's making you do it. By getting pissed at people for doing stuff like that that's helping them, it's ridiculous, number one, but also, we should be a supportive community and like there's so many things against us as people with service dogs going out places there are already so many hurdles these service dog groups that we join and we want to be part of because of community building they should be safe spaces for us to talk about hey i did this what do you think and get positive feedback Unless somebody's doing something that's actually going to hurt their dog, be nice. I mean, I get it if they're doing something that's gonna put their dog at risk of injury or, you know, something like that. Of course, at that point, you know, that's not the same thing. But if somebody is seriously like, I just took my dog to Walmart and I told the people in the front and I'm really proud of my dog and we did good. Don't be mean to them. A big, big reason I had a ton of anxiety about actually taking therapy to non-pet friendly places to do public access training was because of all the fake spotting that I see. That was a huge reason that I didn't want to like go out and like try even doing public access, even though I knew Fairview was ready. Like I, I really felt like she was ready. We didn't start doing public access like in, in non-pet non friendly stuff until Fairview was 14 months old, I think. I felt like she was ready before that, but because of all the fake spotting stuff that I had seen online and also in the groups too, but YouTube is really bad about that. And also people in the Facebook groups are bad about that. It'd be like fake service dog. And it's like, number one, how do you know? And I know that there's the key things that we can say, like, well, if the dog doesn't get corrected, then, you know, it's probably fake. And for example, we've been doing public access for a while. I was reaching for something up on a shelf with therapy. She was sitting down and she sniffed a box on a shelf in the grocery store. Number one, I didn't know at all. And the only reason I knew whenever I came home and I was editing my shopping footage, I saw her do it. That's the only reason I knew. And anytime I see her do stuff, I correct her. But if somebody had seen me in that moment and they wanted to be like, fake spotting, you let your dog smell something and didn't correct it. Like, you know, I mean, you wouldn't even know because a lot of these people who do fake spotting too, they'll do it from like far away, zoom in like, you know, like 40,000 feet and they're like fake. And it's like, whoa, whoa, you don't know anything about this person. And the other thing that really, really is bullshit is people say, well, they have an Amazon vest, so they're fake. You know what? I have two, one tigress vest. You can get those on Amazon all day long. And it's Amazon. My service dog's not fake. Her gear doesn't validate her. So you can't go and just fake spot. That's mean, that's wrong. If they're interfering with your dog, doing something that they really, really should not do that could endanger other people and like another service dog or another person, at that point, yeah, that's one thing to go get a manager. This has been an accidentally therapy free video. She's laying right here. You guys just can't see her. So anyways, it's not nice to not be nice. And it makes everyone in the community feel like pitted against each other and it makes people feel like afraid to share stuff. I want to see you guys succeed. I hope that you want to see other service dog handlers succeed. So let's be nice and try to encourage others and not be mean. Don't be like a keyboard warrior. 
within the community. We have enough bad stuff against us anyway. So I'm gonna link a service dog playlist here. I'm gonna link a video just for you here. And then I'm gonna link a subscribe button up here. Bye guys. <laughs>